Hello and welcome to an inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. This time, Ackerman number 16. This is Orange Boven. Uh, at least that's how I'm going to say it until now. I still got to get my buddy Boss to say words for me. But uh, this, is, uh, this is a great ink. Uh, I didn't even have much to say about it in commentary other than, holy crap, this is a good ink. Like, go get some. Uh, this is a sample from Anderson Pens, one of the very few places you can get this. I think there are only two stores in the U.S. that actually sell Ackerman inks. These come in a very cool bottle. I don't have any bottles of it yet, but I might have to make my first bottle of this because this is uh, an ink that I just love, and I'm actually kind of... I mean, let's see. Can I, how much have I got left? I don't know, a mil or so? Let me see. It's got markings. I've got about... Yeah, I don't know, a mil. <laughs> uh, it coats this very nicely, uh, but I don't think there's going to be any problems cleaning this out. Uh, just because I've got it in this demonstrator here, and let's go ahead and oh, I'm going to push it with a uh, oh, unscrew the wrong part. Let's see, come on, come loose. No, oh, shucks. So I need a little bit of shellac or something on here to keep these parts together. Uh, it's a long story. You can see my Sailor 1911 review. But uh, anyway, all right, let's see if I can push this up slowly in such a way that it doesn't flood ink everywhere. Yeah, all right, good job. I'm amazing at this. All right, uh, so as you can see there, it comes very clean in the converter just with the piston. So I've got no worries about cleaning this out of a pen, so you ought not to either. Uh, and nonetheless, it does coat the walls of this, uh, this vial very nicely. And uh, man, so good. So I actually originally inked this up just because I happened to be doing the review of uh, Mont Blanc's Golden Yellow, and uh, Golden Yellow is better than I expected it to be. Uh, here's the, uh, here's this. Uh, so this is Golden Yellow, which is kind of a, a yellow. It does seem to have faded over time, interestingly enough, uh, but um, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be unusable. So I'm like, ah, I need something that's close to a yellow to, to try out, and so I tried out Boven. Uh, orange bovin here, and man, I love it. So uh, I knew as soon as I inked this up that I had to use it a lot, and I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, anyway, so I've got it in two pens. Uh, obviously, I've got it in this 1911, which is a hard medium. Uh, I ought to try out some of their other uh, nib sizes. I've got two hard mediums from Sailor, and I like both of them quite a bit. Uh, this one does seem a little bit different than my Pro Gear, but nonetheless, very good ink, uh, very rather uh, very good pen. Then I've got it here in this uh, uh, Faber Castell Andoro, which. Uh, I love uh, because I really like writing with it. I think it feels nice. It's got this beautiful smoked oak barrel. Uh, but one thing about this pen is that the cap seal is kind of crap. Um, so if you don't use it very often, this pen will dry up, uh, which is unfortunate. It's a bad, uh, it's like the only bad thing about this pen. If it only had a better cap seal, I would love it all the time. Uh, let's see if I can get this to focus here though for me. Really? No? Let's blow it up down here. Let's see. Yeah, there. So you can see here. Right in here, you've got a little bit of uh, orange, like crust, uh, and I had a little bit of that um, there, and sort of up here between the nib and the feed, uh, I, I fixed that, so it's not there anymore. But uh, I'd lift this pen out for how long? I don't know, a few days anyway, three or four days without writing with it. And since it has a bad cap seal, some of the ink had dried, and so it gave me hard starts and stuff. But uh, as you can see, writes uh, perfectly well now. Right, no problem. Uh, squiggle. So, yeah, no problems. Once you get this going, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with the ink. It's just the pen has a bad cap seal, so uh, you don't really get that great, um, you know, ink longevity. However, I've had it in this pen ever since I did that orange, uh, gold, or rather, uh, golden yellow review, and uh, the cap seal in here, just fine. I've never had this dry out or have a hard start or anything. So, uh, take a look at that ink. It is a bright orange. If you don't like orange, this is not the ink for you. Uh, also, if you're looking for something that has uh, shading and such, this is not the ink for you. If you're looking for one that has uh, sheen, not for you. This is a bright orange. It is saturated, but not too saturated. So it's not as saturated as, say, like a private reserve or whatever, where you have problems with uh, maybe it gumming up or some such thing. But uh, this one is beautifully saturated, if you ask me. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Uh, no shading and sh no sheen. Bleed, feather, and spread. There's just a little bit. So if you look here, let's see, I'll zoom in. Um, I mean, you can see a little bit there in the orange and the Ackerman, uh, but I did have to dip the nib of this in a little bit of water just to get going. So maybe there's still a little bit of water going on, but here in the 1911, you can see there on Staples and a few other places, uh, the J. Probably I just hesitated on the J. I don't like my J, so I've been, and I hate writing it. <laughs> so I, st I stutter a little bit when I write a J. I don't know why. Uh, but then on the back, 
You can see there is a little bit of feathering, or not feathering, uh, rather bleed through, just a little bit actually. And this is a very wet nib, this fabric Fabricastel. Once you get it going, it's quite wet. So, uh, you know, not bad actually. This is uh, it's regular old 20 pound copy paper. Everything kind of shows or uh, bleeds through this a little bit. So, not surprised. This is pretty typical office paper, so that's pretty much what you can expect. All right. Uh, other stuff. Oh, I compared it to a lot of things. So get ready for a bunch of orange inks. Uh, so here it is, of course, up at the top. And then underneath that, I have diamine orange or diamine orange. And I'm not, sh I haven't used this one, actually. I didn't have uh, a memosine swab of it. I thought I did, but I can't find it. So it's around somewhere, maybe. Uh, and it looks quite a bit similar. People tell me sometimes that Ackerman and diamine are just rebranded and they're the same ink. But uh, I don't quite believe it. They do look a little bit different to my eye here, but they're very close. So if you don't want to go for the orange bovin, maybe diamine orange. Uh, it's pretty close, but I haven't used it, so I can't talk about its performance at all. And I've had a lot of dye mine inks that will, uh, I don't know, kind of give me a funk. So like uh, uh, meadow green, or rather just meadow, I guess it's called, gives me like this like kind of funky, I don't know, gunk after a day or so. A few of them like that. So I don't know. I, I do like dye mine inks, so give that one a try. It looks a little bit lighter than the orange to me, or rather the orange uh, bovin. Um, but on a camera and with sort of uncertain lighting, it's a little bit different. So orange bovin, I think, is richer than orange. But either way, both very good looking inks. There's that golden yellow. I'm getting a lot of white balance issue. Yeah, I'll be over here to shade it just a little bit. Underneath that, Edelstein Manor, which is a whole different animal. It looks uh, very similar on my iPhone screen here, but it's very different in real life. Uh, let's see if I can sometimes I open the window a little bit. Yeah, not much. It's in the wrong place. Anyway, uh, under that, Apricot, uh, Apache Sunset, which I've only just started using. I just put that in a pin just now. And then uh, Fuyugaki, which I thought would be pretty close, but it's much more pinkish uh, than this. I've never used Fuyugaki either, I don't think. Uh, so anyway, there's those. All right, let's see how this works with water. Uh, I'm not expecting much. I expect that this will uh, not leave much behind, but we'll see how it goes. I don't think I have anything that's like a water-resistant orange. Uh, does anybody know of a water-resistant orange? Because I don't. If you do, leave a comment. Also, if this is your first time coming to the blog or noticing this on uh, the YouTubes, welcome and uh, tell me how you got here. Tell me who's sending people to my blog and where you've seen me before. That'd be kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and mop this up. Uh, there we go. And there's a whole lot of orange there and not a whole lot of orange here. So you can kind of actually see what it used to say. Let's see, make sure that's all gone. Yeah, it is. We're good. All right, uh, but you can see what it used to say, sort of, but uh, yeah, not a lot. I'm not going to say this is water resistant at all, but you can kind of see the lines. I don't know, maybe if you spill some water on this, you'd be okay. It would be recoverable, but uh, not much better than it's probably recoverable. That's as, that's as good as I'm going to give it. So there you go. And I'm not particularly surprised, uh, mostly because I just did the chromatography. So here it is. And you can see there on the side how it got to be this way. Uh, but here... You see sort of a, uh, I don't know, it's like pinkish down at the bottom, which is why I thought maybe the Fuyugaki would be pretty close because Fuyugaki is a little bit pinkish, uh, and then it fades up to orange. You get these cool streaks. I <laughs> think it looks pretty rad, so there you go. All right, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, so maybe some of the pink will stick around. That's actually, I think, what we're seeing here. Just a little bit of pink. i just stuck around to zoom in. Uh, yeah, kind of. You can see a little bit of pink or something in there. But there's that. All right, so this one, not water resistant, and that's okay. I, I would be shocked if an orange ink was water resistant. Like I said, I have zero oranges that are water resistant. And you can see I have a few orange inks. And this is actually not all the orange inks. I just ran out of pens to uh, dip. Everything except for the orange yellow, the orange bovin, or rather golden yellow, goodness, orange bovin, and I think Apache Sunset. Uh, everything else is dipped, but uh, anyway, there you go. I'm dipped with a fountain pen, so it's not super saturated like it would be you dip it with a glass pen or something. All right, so there you go. That's uh, Ackerman number 16. This is Orange Bovin. It was provided for me free of charge for review by Anderson Pens, and I think I'm going to be buying a, a, a bottle. Uh, and yeah, I have to buy bottles just like everybody else. So um, go and check this one out. It is a fantastic ink. Uh, also, maybe Diamine Orange. I might have to ink that one up here soon, too. I just, I'm out of pens. i got to clean a mess of pens. In fact, you want to see how many pens I have to clean coming up, I don't know, in the next... Heck, maybe I have to do it tonight. Here we go. Hold on a sec. This is a lot of pens. All right, so there's that one, and there's this whole box, and then there's these. So this is this is a lot of pens, and this is a lot more pens, 
So it's got to be good. Not this. This is a gel pen just having to sit there. Yeah, but I have, I have my cleaning work laid out for me. So that's going to take a while. This is a very cool box. I keep these. Uh, I got this from Staples. I think it was like a dollar. Uh, but I keep a little sticky in there. It says pens to be cleaned. And then, voila. And then when they are cleaned, they go in this box, which is similar but just clear until I've you know have time to put them away. So anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing tonight: cleaning uh, a gajillion pens. So there we go. All right. So this is Orange Boven. It's from Anderson Pens. Uh, it's one of the very few places you can go to get uh, Ackerman ink. It comes in a very rad bottle that I don't have any of. Uh, but uh, you know, go over there and check it out. Uh, tell them I sent you. Just, I mean, it won't get you anything extra, but who knows? Maybe they'll be like, hey, thanks, and that'll be cool. So anyway, there you go. I'm Mike. This is inkdependence.com. Please go over to the blog for all kinds of pictures and such, uh, reviews of ink and all that sort of jazz. If you uh, are interested in helping to uh, support the blog and you're wondering, hey, I wonder how I could help support Mike and his ink dependence, well, you can go over to www.patreon.com slash inkdependence, and uh, that will show you how to contribute to the blog and keep it going. Uh, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, so there you go. All right. So uh, that's it. That's all. Peace out.